Ah, the Paper Mario series. Yep, the series that went from this to, to that. Here it is, in a nutshell. Hey guys, it's your boy Dangani, and if you aren't familiar with Paper Mario, it's one of the Mario RPG series alongside with the Mario & Luigi RPG series. Paper Mario was first debuted on the Nintendo 64 with the standard name, Paper Mario. Paper Mario starts you off relaxing as Mario and your good old bro Luigi until you receive a letter from Princess Peach about a party at Princess Peach's castle, and whoa, no way Pe Peach gets taken by Bowser, I know, shocker. Anyway, you end up having to get the seven imprisoned star spirits on land or something, and honestly, I don't know, I never played the first game, don't kill me please. I'm aware that this game was amazingly well received, and with its fun turn-based mechanics and interesting story, Paper Mario was the first in the Paper Mario series. And and while this game was great, the Paper Mario series really took off with Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door for the Nintendo GameCube. And this is the one that I actually played and cherish, okay? This game gave Paper Mario its own staple in the Nintendo series of games, and man, it did for a good reason. The Thousand Year Door is just so unique for a Mario game, and in a good way. Like, a really good way. The game starts you off with a cutscene showing off Princess Peach opening a little chest-like box thing, whatever, that contains a map from a random merchant she met while touring Rogueport, and bada bing bada boom, next thing you know, you're Mario and you go on a mission to collect the seven crystal star spirits. Because that's... That's what you gotta do for the map thing. Oh yeah, also you have to save Princess Peach too, because she got kidnapped again or something, you know. It, it's a normal thing at this point. So anyway, start off at Rogueport, and let me just say, Rogueport is such a goddamn cool place for a Mario game. It's just so unique, and I love it. The characters are diverse, and it's not your typical 2D Mario platformer, aka you don't only see toads. This game is just something different. Anyway, Princess Peach is captured, and you gotta save her, and thankfully you partner up with quite an interesting cast. Most notably, Goombella, a witty Goomba studying archaeology, who is also the first person you meet in Rogueport. Alongside with the Goombella, you eventually partner up with Koops, Madame Fleury, Mini Yoshi, and some more interesting people. Like this mouse that won't stop hitting on Mario, like get away! Ah, ah. You end up going through these distinct worlds to find the Crystal Stars and St. Princess Peach. And you meet so many unique people. There's just so much to do in these games with exploring, collecting, and learning about new things and meeting new people. And I didn't even get to talk about how amazing the combat system is. The combat is a turn-based one, but made so fun, I forget it's just a turn-based combat system. I mean, there's timed attacks, counters, star points, flower points, unique enemies, tons of power-ups, fun and challenging bosses, and even bingo. What? I feel like this game does everything right with the Paper Mario series, with tons to explore, fun turn-based mechanics, a fascinating story, and a unique cast of characters. This is a Paper Mario game done right. And then Nintendo threw it all away. For Super Paper Mario. Yeah, I know some people actually like Super Paper Mario, but like, why? Nintendo literally turned their well-established RPG series into a platformer. This game is not an absolute disaster or anything, but I just, I, why? Why did they have to change? Why, why was it a Paper Mario game to begin with? I mean, there's these gimmicky things because, whoa, they're paper, ho ho. But I don't care about this. No one cares about this. We like Paper Mario because it's a fun and unique series. Okay, so sure, Super Paper Mario wasn't the greatest or anything, but I'm sure Nintendo made the following Paper Mario games some of the best masterpieces they could have today. Nope, they decided to throw literally everything away for the masterpieces we know. It's color splashing. Sticker Star. I don't even know where to begin with these. Color Splash and Sticker Star were hated because they were Paper Mario games. They were hated because everything that made a Paper Mario game wasn't in it. All the creativity, the story, the fun, the gameplay, everything is just gone in these games. Ha! Huh, sounds like me! I mean, Nintendo, please take a hint. Sure, these games are both Paper Mario turn-based RPG games. I mean, sort of. But not even good ones. I mean, these games were hated because they're so gimmicky. And not to say gimmicks are bad, they actually sell. But you can't only rely on a gimmick and expect it to be well-received when you take everything else from a Nintendo. The plots were boring, everyone you see were basically all toads, the world wasn't fun or unique to explore, I don't know, man. Nintendo just dropped the ball hard with these two games. I feel like a lot of good story was sacrificed for a more so kitty plot with a bunch of jokes. Like this one! Wow! Now, if you actually like these games, nothing against you. Sure, I'll question you for eternity, but feel free to join the game. But my go-to Paper Mario game will always be Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. I mean, at least until Nintendo makes a new, good Paper Mario game. Nintendo, please!
Alright guys, what's up? Thank you for watching the video. You can subscribe to this channel, you know, by clicking the subscription button. Also, um, fan art I want to be featuring, so if you have any fan art, you can send it to me on Twitter. I will feature it, and um, thank you guys so much for supporting me and my videos. Anyway guys, adios. I'll see you in the next video.